Imagine finding this real 1965 Shelby Mustang, undisturbed for 35 years. Of course, that rear wing is not stock. Parked in the desert so long, the wheels had sunk into the ground. Credit these photos to Mark Miller of Yucca Valley, California. He reads my column, Rare Finds, and took my advice to snap pictures before disturbing the scene. Under the hood, here's that Shelby VI end plate. This is an authentic Shelby, a real GT350, car number 444 of 562 May. This Mustang, of course, had a few mods from back in the glory days, like those Toyota Celica high back bucket seats, that her shifter, of course, is an add-on. Uh, it's a little later, vintage in 65, but there's the Shelby wood steering wheel and that Shelby gauge pod in the center of the dash pad. Under the hood, there's an Excel coil and several other little mods, but look, there's the very valuable 715 CFM Holley carburetor, and that's the original 289 matching numbers block. On the outside, those driving lights are not Shelby stock, and somebody replaced the original chrome Mustang bumper with a racing-style fiberglass front bumper. Mark snapped this picture of the original Cobra oil pan, the fin unit that was still there. He bought this car in 2010 and is still working on the restoration, which is moving right along. Looks like a beautiful job. The car just needs assembled. A factory show car abandoned in a parking garage? Uh, evidently, that's what happened. Somebody parked a 70-71 Rapid Transit System Duster in quality parking and storage in downtown Detroit in 1978. They paid two years storage and never came back. Here's the press release on this car. A 70 Plymouth Duster 340 built for the Rapid Transit Caravan that toured the country in 1970 and 1971. Steve Giuliano liked to joke that his car was two of one built because it was a red 70 model first, then updated to a green duster in 71. This last iteration in green is how Giuliano restored the RTS show duster. Here's some old prints of the car when it was on tour back in 1971. Giuliano emailed photos to me to write my rare finds column in Mopar Muscle in 2001. He had recently found the car, and here's the 71 duster at the Muscle Car Nationals in Chicago in 2018. Dodge had their scat pack, and Plymouth had the rapid transit system. This 71 Roadrunner was Steve's first rapid transit system purchase and got him going to find the rest of the show cars. Another odd fact is Steve was specifically looking for this exact show car and ran ads for four years in Mopar Muscle, Hemings Motor News, and many other magazines. He got nibbles, but nothing was real until he got a call about a radical looking duster in a parking lot behind the Fox Theater in downtown Detroit. He flew out there from New York, and sure enough, this car was a real deal. The 71 RTS show car. It took months, but Steve managed to purchase this barn find. Look at this 1955 Ferrari, parked under a canopy of trees in a fenced pen on a ranch in Texas. This is a 750 Monza Spider with body by Scaglietti raced in 1955 by Phil Hill, and thus the even serial number. Odd VINs are streetcars. Rick Grape of Fort Worth, Texas said he had never won the lottery, but he wasn't complaining now. The original four-cylinder engine was gone. This all started when Rick told a friend he always wanted a Ferrari. His friend asked, what kind of Ferrari? That's because his friend remembered a Ferrari parked on a ranch where he had worked as a kid in the 1960s. He thought the car was still there. It was. For Rick, any old Ferrari was going to work, and this one sure did. 10,081 miles. A 1969 Camaro Z28. Original owner for 46 years. His name was Jim Leonard of Media, Pennsylvania. He put the car in blocks the day he brought it home from the dealer, just five miles from his house. According to his cousin, Jim really loved the Z and wanted it to last. He wasn't sure what he was going to do with it. Most of those miles uh, he put on the car when he first bought it. The last inspection sticker was 1994, and this was 2015. The Z28 had not been started in 11 years. 
Next to the 69Z28 was an 84Z28. Leonard bought that car because 84 was the last year for carburetors. It just had 3,200 miles. Only Leonard's passing facilitated this sale. Simple cleaning is all this car will ever see. No restoration. There are big collectors now that cherish unrestored muscle cars. This Z28 went to such a home. The new owner likes low mileage originals, and that's what he got. Preservation by a man who knew from day one. This Z28 was really special, and he really loved it. So, farewell, old friend. You did a good job. You preserved this car for posterity. It went to a good home. The biggest and best custom car find of all time, it could be Orbitron, as seen here in 2007. And here's what the car looks like today, after Bo Bachman and his Galpin Auto Sports team in Southern California restored the car to its original glory. The creation of legendary customizer Big Daddy Ed Roth in 1964, this car had been lost for more than 40 years when Michael Lightborn of El Paso, Texas got a lead on a fiberglass custom with a Corvette engine. He blew this off for a few months, but when he saw photos, he knew instantly the custom was the long-lost Orbitron, where the car had been sitting on a street in Juarez. Well, it was not so easy to spot because that original bubble top was long gone, as was the nose with red, green, and blue headlights. You know, that's where Orbitron got its name. Those three colors were supposed to combine in a high-tech way to form a brilliant white light. Of course, this was fantasy, but the idea did fit the futuristic theme of the car. This is maybe the greatest custom car find ever. Of course, that lost story enhances the car's value, which is into the millions of dollars today restored. But in 1967, Daryl Starbird sold Orbitron for $750. Parked in a basement in Jennings, Missouri was a real gem, an original owner 1956 Corvette with 41,000 miles. When Bob Kuntz heard the estate of Harold Pullman was selling the car, he was all in. First, an original owner anything is a fine, but this was a Corvette. And we can go further. It was not just any Corvette. It was a dual four, 265 cubic inch V8. But we can go one step further. Chevrolet did build 3,080 of the dual four cars, but only 111 had the special high lift cam, which was option code 449, known as the Duntoff cam for the car's chief engineer, Zora Arcus Duntoff. Furthermore, the engine was original and documented with paperwork. So, what we have is an unrestored 56, white with red interior, and two tops. To buy the 56, Coons made an offer for the entire state, house, and contents. The house wasn't worth a whole lot, and an old Crosley in the basement wasn't worth much either. Coons finally threw a little more than $100,000 at the estate, and he later found a message on his answering machine. The court had accepted his offer. This old container? Who could have found it to begin with uh, in rural Pennsylvania? I mean, did you watch the movie Deliverance? But inside the container, a 1970 Enco Deuce, one of 175 built and one of the great barn finds ever for a muscle car. I mean, parked in 1988, the original owner, her name was Brenda, became so attached to the little red Nova, she just couldn't give it up. See that inspection sticker? That's when she quit driving it. Skip Lacates had researched that the local Chevrolet dealer in York, which was Amon R. Smith, had taken delivery and sold three of these deuces brand new. Skip talked with local muscle car heads in the area and one day found the original owner's name. Before long, he made contact. He got to see the car inside that container, but it was not for sale. He'd stop by every year and the answer was always the same. No, it's not for sale. Fifteen years passed and finally Brenda decided to let go. That was 2012. Skip got to buy a piece of Yenco history and lucky for collectors, the Nova was not modified. I mean, it still has the unique Yenco components like this hood tack, the wheels with the Y on the center caps, Y for Yenco, the deuce in black paint on the hood, black stripes with Yenco deuce on the top of each rear quarter, and this cool Yenco fender badge on the passenger side of the rear deck lid. Of course, inside you see Yenco deuce lettering on each door panel. The transmission's an automatic, but 
the unique slap shifter looks like a stick and of course under the hood was the pumped up solid lifter 350 making 360 horsepower. I walked up on this 1963 Thunderbird at Mustang Country in LA in 1995. This was no ordinary bird. Here it is restored in 2008. Look at that unique fast back roof. Look at the Thunderbird letters inset into that taillight panel. Don Chambers and his wife Eileen own Mustang Country. Don explained this old T-Bird was a one-off prototype that Ford Motor Company built and named the Italian. Ford was into jazzing up their lineups at the time for a sportier appearance. Here's the 63 Formal Roof Galaxy. And now look at this 63 and a half Galaxy with a fastback roof. And here's the finished 1963 Thunderbird fastback, the Italian, that did not make production. The Italian toured the U.S. and, well, it even went to the Paris Auto Show in the Ford Custom Caravan. The Italian made the cover of the 63 summer issue of Popular Cars. But without people with an extreme passion for cars, the Italian might very well have been lost to history. It was Don Chambers that showed his illustrated Thunderbird book to his friend Joe. And Joe, that when he saw the photos of the Italian, screamed, Hey, I see that car every day. He was an extra at the studios in Los Angeles, and somebody was driving the Italian to work. So Joe tracked it down and bought it in 1971. Don tried to buy the car from Joe, but Joe would not sell. At one time, Don was so passionate, he offered a small apartment building for the Italian. Don and Eileen started to call that apartment building Thunderbird after that. Those were the Thunderbird apartments. Now, Don and Eileen finally bought the Italian years later, and it would have gone into a car museum they planned to build in their home state of Tennessee had Don lived. Tom Maruska of Duluth, Minnesota purchased the concept Thunderbird in February of 2006. Don passed away in September. Maruska did a ground-up restoration. The Italian sold at Barrett-Jackson in 2008 for $660,000, but the money is secondary to the passion. When I see this car, I think of Don and Eileen, and I hope everyone else will too, because barn finds are about people, and people are about barn finds. <laughs>